Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Awesome Day of FileMaker Training. I am Richard Carlton, creator of FMTrain.tv, where every day we're having a lot of fun building great FileMaker solutions and answering questions and making all of you, hopefully helping you to become more awesome FileMaker developers. Even if you're not getting anything out of this, I get a lot out of it because I learn things that I didn't know frequently. We have a conversation and I learned something that I didn't know previously. It's very exciting. The FileMaker platform is this amazing uh bit of software, a bit is probably misleading, but a platform where we can build awesome applications that solve customer needs and not just solve like any willy nilly kind of people say, whoa, you could solve that with anything. The FileMaker platform has been around for 34, 35 years, however many, I've been using it for 34, it pre-existed before I ever got involved. It's pretty damn impressive. And you very rarely have to tell a customer no, right? Like they were in here today and they asked me for like G whiz stuff. And, and and the other day, they're like, oh, we need to be able to track this and any other thing. And I was like, I started working on it. Sometimes I can finish it immediately. Sometimes the request is bigger. But I don't almost ever have to tell them, no, it can't do it. It's a pretty rare thing. A lot of platforms, a lot of people that want to compete with the Claris FileMaker platform, when people ask them things, they have to tell them no. The secret to success in life, well, you always say the customer is always right. That's not true. But saying yes to the customers will generally result in more sales for you as opposed to saying no to everything, right? And so you don't want software that forces you to say no. You like software that allows you to say yes. So if we look at our upcoming broadcast schedule today is for beginners. It's going to be a conversation about uh, perform script on server or PSOS, cute little acronym. Um, and that is a, really a neat feature that pretty much even Margaret uses it. It's uh, at a inter Margaret's kind of this beginning power junior, at least a power junior to intermediate level person. I don't know where she's at. So if you run into processes, they need to run faster. They're only going to run so fast on a client row or go, excuse me. The one ends up happening is that you uh, find, need to find a way to make it faster. There are, of course, ways to make your code better, code, better calls, more thoughtful code, blah, blah, blah. We spend a lot of time talking about performance optimization. But one thing is to get the server do it for you and make it go a lot faster. Hey, this, chat, this live stream is totally free. If you find value in it or you hate us, whatever, please be a sponsor buy one of the training bundles. We would greatly appreciate it. We are going to continue to work to update these uh, often and, and as we can fit that into the schedule. Um, I already am working 60 hours a week. Apparently, I have to work 80 hours a week to catch up. So that is the plan. Today's conversation, we're going to pivot, um, is on perform script on server. So it's a beginning topic. It's one that it's one that, you know, we do, we cover, but um, it gets forgotten. Margaret, if you want to, I can share my screen, but you have to release your screen if you're going to do that. Here is a sample file. So let's talk about this real quick. So we are on file. So Jess, hey, Jess, Jess, questions, be engaged, ask questions. All of you who are not been using PSAS um, and you don't know what this is or you have questions about it, please ask. Because if you have a question, there's probably 100 other people on the stream who have questions. Actually, quite a few people watch this, but they're lurkers. They lurk their stealth mode, right? So uh, PSOS is the idea that, so one is that you have a file. Here's an FMP12 file. Most FileMaker files, they start off locally, but we put them on the server. So this file right here is running from a server. I'm going to go ahead and close it real quick. I'm going to say open host. We have a server called the stream dot at rcc.com server. And these are the files that are on it. These are test files. We're going to play with this file right here. We played with this about a week ago. I'm going to trust that those of you who know get into here will behave yourselves and not be bad people. That would be really great. And I'm looking at some of you specifically because I know I don't want to have to run through here and change all the security code. So just please be nice. Um, so this is the workflow record lock demo. We're also going to use this for PSOS. So it's a FMP12 file that lives on the server. So where is the one graphic I have? Oh, like today's conversation, real quick, we'll cover this, is about people that are probably in here, right? You have to be probably at least somewhere between beginning, brand new, and intermediate. And then there are some people like Jess, who's pretty advanced. Uh, she does API stuff and other stuff, probably has a programming background somewhere else with another tool. Um, so I would call Jess probably someone up here, but there's little silos of knowledge that are missing, right? She's not a your Jedi. Who is it? Uh, you don't go. Don't face Lord Vader. Your Jedi training is incomplete. So yes, don't 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 be going to combat as a ninja unless you fight. Figure out the little silos of data you're missing. And we fill them in. So today we're filling in, telling the FileMaker server to run the script for you. It's that simple. 
In fact, I can just end the show. It's done. It's over. That's it. If you understand that and you understand kind of the limitations of it, then the world is your oyster because it will make things run much faster. So what I want to do here is I'm going to open this up. The FMP12 file is on a server. It's somewhere on the West Coast of the United States. I'm technically in California for what that's worth. I'm going to log in here with my super secret password, which no one should know. And so here's the idea. If we if we go into script workspace, here's the we can build scripts, write code. Like here's a little bit of code that does something. Doesn't matter what it does. Okay. This is a little bit of code. People say low code, high code, pro code, right? So anytime you're writing code like this, not necessarily low code, but it's got the hooks to be very powerful, if that makes sense. Um, and you can comment the code, you do all sorts of stuff. So this is a sample file that Claris used to have or does have, whatever they have. And, and so it does a lot of things. The idea, though, is that when you call a script on the client, this is a fundamental truth of life. So everyone pay attention. If you call, if you're on a client, you call a script, it's pro or go. The script will run on your client. The script is very, I'm going to say single threaded, but it's single minded. BioMaker Pro at the client level is very single minded. It's very linear. It's like you don't multitask very well. FileMaker doesn't multitask at all for the most part. You're like, Wait, well, so you can't run scripts simultaneously next to each other on a, on pro or on go. If you run a script, this is a fundamental. You start at the top. It, it runs a, as you saw, call this script right here uh, or fi find one that's, I don't know, we have any that are longer. Most of, oh, there's a little bit longer one there. There's a little bit longer script. Okay. It's not commented. Anyway, so when you run this script or on pro, say that one of you wants to log on to this file and you want to run the script. So one, your copy of FileMaker Pro is going to do the script. It's going to execute it. It's going to start on line one and it's going to go right on down running automatic as fast as it can. I'm going slow. It's going to run top to bottom and stop. If the script is running over here, another script cannot run at the same time on the same client. If you can interrupt and insert a script, like I can call another script in here for some reason, or I can interrupt with a J, um, a uh, a web viewer interaction back to FileMaker. I can interrupt the script that's running. But if you interrupt the script that's running, it's going to pa either pause and cancel the one that say say like you're doing stuff in FileMaker. Whatever reason we do, we convince it to run a script for you. Okay, and it, and 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 your pro is running a script and it goes, dude, this web viewer is telling me to run a script. And one of the options that you can interrupt, you can say, interrupt, just do this and come back or interrupt and cancel what you were doing previously. So right here, it, you're gonna tell it, you could tell it, cancel cancel what you're doing and do this new thing, or run the new thing and then come back and continue on here at line 15 and keep going, right? But at the end of the day, it's only gonna run one script at a time. It's not um, multi, you know, multitasking is a generic human term. It's like someone who could do five things at once, okay? This doesn't do that. FileMaker server does five things at once. It's very multitasky. Okay. Multitasky. Okay. That's our new word for the day. Multitask with a Y on the end or EE. -E, okay. Server does that. It handles a bunch of people simultaneously. It can be doing a bunch of stuff in parallel for the most part. This is a couple roadblocks like record locking, which it has to kind of mm, handle, but it's very multi, it's very multi, multitasky oriented. Okay. That makes sense. It's designed that way. Pro is not that way. There's like one or two minor outlier moments where Pro will do two things at once, largely because when Claris built them, it knew that the two things would never run into each other. Here's the problem with Pro doing two things at once. You could write a script and you could write another script. And as long as the scripts never went anywhere near each other, like on the same layout or on the same record, it'd be fine. But how many developers are really going to think about that? Not too many. So they decided instead of, instead of unleashing the hounds of hell upon the public, they would just restrict that you could only run one script at a time. Because it would run into record locking in and of itself? You'd lock yourself or you'd be, God knows what you would do, right? Mm -hmm. So the point is, is that you're going to run into yourself. And, and it's, so it's very a linear process. It doesn't mean it can't go everywhere or fork or do things, but it can't come down. It's like when you have the little dominoes, you see those do world domino competitions. You've got 5 billion dominoes, right, in a room. And you hit it, it goes, and they run around. And one domino is falling, and then it splits and goes in two dominoes, and then they're going together. Okay? FileMaker Pro won't do that. Server will do that. Pro won't do that. Fundamental. It's a fundamental. Okay? So 
if this script runs at say say this script it runs at 20 miles an hour 20 kilometers an hour for those of you who are not using american units imperial units versus metric so kilometers pick whatever 20 an hour 20 something's an hour okay that's not fast enough i have a script in here that runs for these people it took 11 seconds how do you make it faster? Well, we could watch a Nick video or watch Richard's videos and understand how to do it. You could make it much faster by better design. One of the chief things you can do instead of redesigning it is tell the server to run it for you. Generally, the server will run it anywhere from 400% to 1,000% faster. So four times faster to 10 times faster. So we had a script in here that took 11 seconds. When I run to have the server do it, it's one and a half seconds. One and a half seconds for something to happen, the customer doesn't notice. 10 seconds for it to happen, the customer notices, right? So it's like the secret to customer happiness is this ability, okay? Back in the old days, back in the old days, um, you, the FileMaker server would not run scripts for you. So you would install either on the same server, which always made a lot of people nervous and at one point wouldn't even work. They put a copy of Pro on the same piece of hardware. So you're running server over here and Pro over here, or you put them on two machines side by side. So that's that robot machine idea that we have that, Margaret. And a robot machine running next to it on, right on the same local network would be really fast, okay? As opposed to me being two or 300 miles away. Another fundamental of performance speed, the farther you are from the FileMaker server, the slower it goes. That's latency. I'm not going to get into that too much. It's network speed. Little slowdowns on the freeway, right? Okay. So how do we tell the server to run the script? Okay. So at a very basic level, what we're going to do is we're going to create a script over here that for whatever reason is going to, where we're going to, it doesn't, doesn't, it actually doesn't even matter remotely at all. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new script. I'm going to say, let's uh, schedule a meeting. Uh, the next meeting, schedule, next meeting. Okay, and what I want to do is I'm going to create the new script. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save these and close these real quick here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just really basic. I have this script here. I haven't done anything with it. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to, ooh, there's a lot of triggers on this. Okay, I need a layout without <laughs> triggers. Okay, we need a triggerless layout. Security bypass. All right, here we go. We'll use the security bypass layout, okay? So there's no, notice there's no trigger. Remember, we learned from last week because we're doing a demo. You step in something and then you corkscrew. Jess was saying, whoa, I've been learning how this works. And the people left triggers in here. And what do I do? <laughs> Build a layout with no triggers on it. That way you don't set off the landmines by accident. Okay, they're waiting for you. Okay, so building on top of that conversation is today. So I'm going to define a field real quick. I'm going to say next meeting agenda. Okay, that'll be a text field, create that, and I'm gonna say next meeting date. Okay, so now, oop, and that's gonna be a date field. Okay, so these are local fields on this file. You hit create, not change, you gotta change oh, it. I, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, good, great, so okay, save. So I'm, I'm logged into the file in FileMaker Pro, the file is hosted on server, I made these changes, FileMaker Pro, after I said, okay, save the changes to the server, the server wrote them to the FMP12 file that's on the FileMaker server. Correct? Yes? yes. Well, then we have these fields down here, okay? And we can have a, so let me just create this script. So first off, we're going to uh, go to Command-Shift-S, script workspace. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut. It pops up down here. I'm just simply going to say set a field, okay, and... I'm doing things kind of very deliberately here. And once again, this could be a very complicated calculation, right? That's the whole point of this. I'm building a very simple thing. If it's simple and it we go fast, you'd never use PSOS, right? Because there's a couple complexities with PSOS that we're going to cover. But uh, this is going to be very simple. Uh, amazing meeting with Claris sales. Amazing meeting with Claris sales. Fine, good, perfect, okay. Next, me the field is going to be... Set field to do, 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 down to the bottom. So these are two fields we designed. This is a date field, so we're going to put a date in there. I'm going to say, uh, let's just say today's date. Get get get. Actually, we'll set that. Yeah, let's say current date. And then if I want to add like five days to it or something, it doesn't particularly matter at all. Just something, right? So plus seven. So if you add a number to a date, you're adding days. If you have add a number to a time, you're adding seconds. As a hot tip. Right. Hit okay. 
So if I save this and then I want to make up a quick button over here, doo -doo -doo, button goes right here. The button is going to be uh, set next meeting. Okay, do nothing, perform script. Perform script is called the schedule next meeting. Okay, the button doesn't look like much of a, oh, it's good enough button. So I press the button, one, two, three, click, fills it in. Okay, great. Now, let's say that this script is big and beefy and it takes 10 or 15, 20, 30 seconds, right? And I, I will show this to you what we've done when you get beyond this. But here's the rub, that you could tell the FileMaker server to run it for you, okay? Margaret, I'm going to need you and Jess and whoever else has questions about this to jump in on this, right? So I'm going to see. I'm going to get rid of that. Get rid of those two. I'm just going to have that. All right. So here's the deal. We could have a script. What we could do is say, there's a schedule next meeting. And then I could I could have a script called, huh, whoops, that's not what I wanted. I want a new script that says, that's underneath my face here. Okay, tell uh, F, uh, server. I can say FMS or server to run next, next meeting script, right? Next meeting script. Okay, so let's do this real quick. I'm gonna come down here. I'd probably put some comments in here. We did this because it's important, because it's wonderful, and these are the considerations, okay? And then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna say perform script, perform, you got script, you have script on server, and the script with callback is interesting. I get to kind of totally figure out where I'd want to run that because um, it calls back to you. It doesn't call back to someone else, which is kind of eh. maybe someday someone will show me a really great demo of this that I just have to have it. I have to I have to have this. But this is where you tell the server to do something. The server does stuff Then the server forcibly fires a script on your computer. Which might or might not be OK, right, because since you're not. The user's in an, un, an uninspected spot where the script takes over their computer and does whatever, right? Is that good? My guess is you'd have to run something that's kind of innocuous, really lightweight. If that's a global field or something like that, Margaret, maybe a global variable. That way it's there, right? Yeah, but if that's, you, yeah. <laughs> but if you want to say, I want to update the screen and have it like indicate something, right? Well, the, get an update and a refresh. If the person's editing a field, it's going to remove them in the middle of their edit and put it, you know, then you'll put a graphic up on the top. You had to refresh the screen, refresh the screen. You had to close that object that they were typing and save, commit, refresh. So they're in the middle of writing a book, too long, didn't read, TLDR, whatever. And, and they're right in the middle of it. The computer, like, loses its shit. They have no idea why it threw them out. They're just not there anymore, right? So you have to be thoughtful about firing a script on someone who's not expecting it or disrupting them. Makes sense. That's an important concept. Happens in other areas in FileMaker. So I'm just going to do this one right here. We're going to tell perform a script from the list. Okay. And then over here, we're going to say run this. Okay. And then now here's this mode. It's got two modes on this. This is, uh, uh, I'm just going to give you some military technical lingo here for those of you. For those of you who hate the Army or Navy, Air Force or anything, this is probably not the live stream for you. So Wait for completion is fire and forget. It's, it's a terminology used in weapon systems where the Russians are coming across the border in Ukraine and the Ukrainians send a drone out to kill a tank. The bad guys are coming and they're going to kill a tank. If you're Russian, you probably don't like the stream either. So the drone, if you can fire it and it has a little AI brain and it's hunting for a tank and, you, and you've told it how not to blow up your own tanks. Okay, important thought, AI, right? That's next week. So it knows to look for a Russian tank not your your tank, but their tank, and it goes and blows it up. So a lot of people get the video footage back, right, and they can watch what's happening. But if you're in the okay, let me help some of you who have not done any, not law enforcement, not fire. If you're in a firefighter, you're in a burning building and going sideways, this is the same kind of stress. It's like life and death stress. When things are going sideways, you need to tell something to do it, and you need to move on. It's 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 called the OODA loop. It's your decision making process. You need to tell to do it, move on. Tell to do it, move on. Tell to do it, move on. This is that function. Tell the FileMaker server to do it, and then do you want to move on? Right now it says wait for completion. Okay, that's fine. That's civilian lingo for fire and forget. Okay, fire and forget means you fired it, and you're washing your hands of it. It'll take care of itself, or it won't. Whatever. But you're too busy doing other stuff, so you're going to move on to the next thing. Makes sense, Margaret?
So, okay, but in terms of FileMaker, what happens when you wait for the, when you decide that you are going to wait for the completion? You are, you're not. You're going you to wait. Yeah. Oh, then your, your computer literally goes like a big pause and everything just beach balls. Oh. Beach ball, beach ball, waiting for it to Doesn't finish. Doesn't that kind of negate the purpose of PSOS? Well, it, it depends if there's a sense. So this is where the callback thing comes in. People want to say, well, I wanted to tell me when it's completed this five minute script, but I don't want to sit and stare at it, but I still want to know. Well, you we could solve that other ways. The callback, you could set a flag where it flag, you know, it's like indicator. And the next time you visit a screen, it pops up. Right. You see what oh, I'm saying? Okay. You change so you like, like a, a little a, notification. Change like a little field in the preferences that like a little, and it should cause a little red dot, you know, something to pop up or the transient notification or something, right? Something to happen. Okay. So, if you have something that's really fast, like a second or two seconds, then maybe you want to just wait for that way. Because because if you wait, then when you're st when you resume, you know that that shit on the server executed fully. Mm -hmm. If we if we fire and forget, we just say we're not going to wait. Then we know somewhere in the future, and maybe it's already happened that the server is going to finish flying the missile to the bad guy and finishing the mission. Blow it up. But we're not going to know really what happened because we're not sitting there staring at the results because we're moved on. Okay. So you have to figure out how to capture the results because the server could do it, run a script for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, wait for this on. Okay. And then what I'm going to say is I'm going to say, you know, beep, 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 beep. And then it's going to show a dialogue show, which we never want to show dialogues. There's almost only good in a, <laughs> in training, uh, server finished. <laughs> finished probably successful because <laughs> right now we don't really know what really happened okay so the server can pass back a script parameter to you and you can receive that right so here's what we're going to do i'm going to save this okay and then we're going to run this and if mark is thinking ahead she already knows it's going to happen because it's like one of the critical points of this training i'm going to run this script down here okay i'm going to i'm going to tell Oh, I'm, I'll just duplicate it. Let me do do this. Duplicate it. And this will be the key sauce. Okay. So it's going to tell the server to do it for us. Okay. And we're going to tell it to go to the script here. Okay. We'll be good with that. We're good with that. And that one's this one here. And that one goes, yep, yep. Save. It's all saved. It's all good. Browse mode over here. Let me just run this one one more time. That's working. Delete, delete, delete. Okay. I'm going to run this. It should tell the server to fill it in automatically. Is that going to work? Yes or no, Margaret? One word answer. Yes or no? He, he, well. Okay, that's like four words. Pick a word. <laughs> Jess, a pick word. a word. Jess, I'm going to go to Discord here. De Jess, are you there? Do you want to guess? Margaret doesn't want to commit to this because she doesn't want to be embarrassed. I need someone who doesn't care about embarrassment. <laughs> All uh, right, so. Probably it's not going to work. Okay, I'm going to press it. One, two, three. Okay, so it did work. Okay. I know why it worked. Okay. Because you're already in the same layout. I'm going to run it again. One, two, three. I don't understand. That's why we're doing this train. Because it's not, it's not a context thing because you're in the same context. It's not a context thing because we're in the same context. That is your statement. I'm not. I'm not as a, as your d defense attorney telling the court that that's accurate. I'm just saying that's what my that's what my client is pleading, Your Honor. She <laughs> says that it's in the same context, and therefore it's good. So what? So what is this client? What is this right here? What is this right here? It's this is a FileMaker client, FileMaker Pro. Okay, let's go visit FileMaker Server. Okay. History FileMaker Server Administrative Console. Going to log in. Right. With so uh, don't say anything. People have to come to this conclusion on their own. So this, we told what to run the FileMaker server. What did we tell to run the FileMaker server? Or correction, what did we tell to run the script? Was the FileMaker server? I said that backwards, sorry. We told the FileMaker server to run the script for us. So over here on this machine is our copy of FileMaker Pro. Okay, it's run the script. But we said, eh, no, we want the FileMaker server to run the script for us. The FileMaker server is where? probably in Oregon or in San Francisco Bay Area somewhere. It's not even in this building where I'm at. 
Okay. So you're telling another client to run a script. Okay. That's totally cool. Let's take a look at the code. This is what we told the script to run uh, the other client. So we said, FileMaker server, run script. Uh, 101 is a monkey bread number on it. Okay. We go to 101. The script says set field and set field. That's all it does. Well, what it sets the field so it has a table, kind of maybe, right? But, you know, <laughs> the fact that it never worked at all in the first place was just random luck. Okay. There is no context. Remember, this is like telling your best friend, hey, can, best friend, can you run this script for me? Okay. They run the script. All it says is set field, set field. Okay. If they run the script up here, which is how they're going to run it, we didn't say, hey, FileMaker server, go to this layout and press this button. That's not what we told it to do. We told it to come here to the script. What 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 that instruction was down here, I'm waving my hand down here, was to run that this script right here. So it's going to open up the script workspace. It doesn't give a shit about anything else. It's going to go here and run this script right here, and then it's going to hit play right here. That's it. Okay? So... For your script to work, you have to give it the context. You have to pass it the context, okay? Most of the time, if you build this, you're going to know that you're on this layout. And so I'm going to say, go to layout, okay? Bypass security. Don't worry about it. That's the name. So that gets us closer, okay? Gets us closer. But we don't know what record we're on, ah. right? So how do we, we could do this about 55,000 different ways, right? Pass it the ID. Yeah, we could pass it the record ID. So what we want to do over here is we want to say um, probably just pass it in a, uh, a, parameter? In a script parameter. Probably in a parameter is where we want to do that. You could do it. You could also set it into a global, uh, not a global field, a field and a preference table. Remember, a preference table is a table with a single record with number and text fields and, and, and real data in there. And if you make an edit in there and commit the record, other users of the system can see that, right? That's what a preference table is. We all remember that, right? Everyone just may not know about that. I'm hoping she does. What we want to do is we put on the script parameter, we want to say, get the record, record ID. Now the question is, can I do a search on that? Now, normally what I would do is I wouldn't use FileMaker's internal hidden record ID. I would get my own primary key. Um, and, and because I designed this database, I would know that there's a primary key in here, which I oh. don't actually see. Uh, uh, oh, did Nick not put one in? Okay. Nick probably did not put a primary key in, which makes me very suspicious about Nick. Oh, well, no, what's this? ID matching field. Is this your, it's, okay, he gave it a really bad name, so let's do that. I'm going to fix that. There we go. How about that? Change. Okay. A lot of you use, I'm using serial numbers for simplicity. Okay. A lot of you want to use UUID. Absolutely. If you understand why you might want to use UUID and what UUID is, use it. If you don't know what UUIDs are, then just use a, a, a sequential serial number. Okay. For most situations, that will be sufficient. I'm going to hit OK. It's uh, thinking about it. It's going to go here. Back to layout mode. Oh, it's right up there at the top. So we're on record number six. Okay. There's six, five, four, three, two, one. Right. Pretty great. So what we're going to do is we're going to over here in the script. So it's as simple as possible. We're going to pass it the primary key, ID contact. Okay. So it's going to pass it the ID contact and it's script parameter. We all know what script parameters are. That's where I'm going to wave in my hands. So hopefully people can see this, Margaret. I'm as big as possible. It's where like you're playing American football or you're playing rugby maybe if you're in the EU and you throw the football down the field. And, you, and the wide receiver is like your best friend. And you're like, oh, man, bro, bro, want to go out for dinner tonight and have some brewskis. Okay. So what you do is you write on your post-it note, beer at 5 p.m. Remember, you're professional football players. That's cool. You take the post-it note. You stick it on the football. You actually take the post-it note and you put it on the football. Then you throw the football. He catches the football, he or she, if you have a female on your team, whatever. Catches the football, okay? Takes the note off, reads it. That's the script parameter. It's a little note. It could be a big note. It could be a whole essay, but it's something that is duct taped to the football. You told the script to, to perform the script. That's you throw in the football. Go do this. By the way, there's a little note that goes with it. Yes, Margaret? Yeah, that makes sense. My football analogy. 
So we're going to send it that. We're going to send it that. We're going to send that. Great. I'm going to save that. Then I'm going to come over here. When the server gets it, it's going to go, hey, go to this layout. Then we're going to set error capture on, or that's really error suppression on. Because remember, we're not going to run this. The server is going to run this, okay? The server is going to run this. But we want to test it. So how do we test it to make that work? Okay, so let's, first let's fix this. Enter find mode. Oh, damn it, not that. Enter find mode. Now I'm doing it this way so it's very verbose so you can see the command that we're calling. Set field to set target field is the ID there. Because remember we went to layout so the field will be there. I'm going to specify that it's going to, well, how do we get the script? How do we get Don't the post-it note? do you need to off set it as a variable? Uh, oh, you can just do this get script parameter? Yeah, uh, this is this is read the post-it note. Should yeah. say get post-it note. Okay. So it gets the post-it note, it puts it in there. Then we're gonna perform uh the perform the find. Okay. And um if huh, so if if get oh all right, if get last error equals zero, which means there's uh, I'm doing this wrong. I can't get last oh, I'm probably screwing this up. Hang on. I go, there we go. Get last error. If that equals, and I always write this out as full equation. Some of you want to do the shorthand. You can know what I'm talking about. You can do that. If it equals zero, that means there's no error. So what you want to do is, what I like to do, because the problem is, error, it means there's no error. The error code that come back could be error 401. It could be a bunch of different error codes. We don't want to have to write those out. So we want to say, in he, inside here, we want to say, uh, comment test to see if find failed. Now you just did it, so the server should be able to find the record you just did, right? But what if bad things happen? What I'm gonna say is not equal. So I'm gonna hold the option key down and hit the equal sign, and it's a little equals not equal to, okay? So if there's an error condition, it's going to exit the script, exit the script, and pass the script result on and probably put it in quotes. I don't know if it has to be in quotes in here or not. Let's put it in quotes, in quotes. Unable to find. And then what you might want to do is put that get script parameter back in here, right? Script. Uh, that way you know what it did or didn't do, right? Unable to find that. So that's what's going to pass back, okay? And then you're, and that will exit the script, okay? Now, if there's no error, it's going to do this and this. Now, if we exit, if we, it, when the script ends, wait, okay, Margaret, when you get the line 18, is there a line 18 right here? Uh, Margaret, is there a line 18 here? No. Okay. What happens when FileMaker gets to line, whatever FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Server gets to line 18, what happens? It exits the script? Correct. The script will exit. And you're not passing any notes back. It just, it exits because it, it ran out of stuff to do. It has nothing else to do. It's done. But I could put, and I'm going to duplicate this. I could put this down here. So that way, when I get to the end, it's still going to exit. Either it's almost like redundant and stupid, except that I can pass a note back. Success. So what this allows me to do is pass a script parameter back the other way. A reverse script parameter is called a script result. Okay. So if you're calling a script out there to do something, you're passing a script parameter. When this, when it, whatever finishes on the other side comes back to you. That's a script result, okay? There's effectively, it's like if the wide receiver threw the football back to you on football, he took the note off, wrote his own note, threw it back to you, and he put his own post-it note on there. That's the equivalent. The script sent you its own note. Doesn't have to. Most of the time, I don't use script results. I Only, only if I need to pass a note backwards in the sequence. But we, this is going to run on the server. So what I want to do is, Say, comment, uh, this is expected to run on FileMaker server or cloud. If you have FileMaker cloud, which is server that Clara sells as a service. So, so expect to run the server, go to layout, fine. Set error capture on, cool. Enter find mode, set the script parameter we had, perform the find. If there is an error of some type, okay, it's going to exit the script, stop right here at 14, and send this note backwards. Okay? Makes sense? Save. 
Now, let's just run this like this. We're going to do a script debugger on. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say script debugger on. God, that's huge. So script debugger, we've had shows on this before. Most of it, I guarantee probably just has been doing this. I'm going to go here. I'm going to clear out these two values here. I'm going to tell this script. I'm just going to run it manually over here. So I'll tell this script right here. Uh, this is the one that the server would run for. So I'm going to run it manually to see what happens. I'm going to come down here. It's going to go to the right. So what I can do right here is I can change a layout to something else just to make sure it's going to do something else. Oops. Oh, it's a trigger. I fired a trigger. Stop firing a trigger. <laughs> I went that. It was a layout trigger. Stop. And that's another, no, trigger. another trigger. Oh, my God. It's horrible. Okay. So now here's where we're at. We're on this layout. We're in the wrong spot. So what it's going to do, it's going to go to the correct spot. Now it's on the correct spot. And then the air capture comes on. Yes. Enter find mode. Click. Now set the value of the script parameter. But we didn't pass the script parameter, so it's going to set nothing. Perform the find. Error. 400. See, I said 400. There's a 401. But it's an error. So what it's going to do is going to exit and pass a script result back. But did we call this from a script? We just called it raw, right? You're like, oh, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step down. It's going to exit. Done. Okay, cool. Now, let's take the next step on this. Everyone following along? Do we have any questions at this Why at was it mad? Was it just a random error because? No, no, no. Because it was doing a food, do a find on the script parameter I passed. I didn't, I didn't pass it. Oh, because you was didn't no... pass it anything because, right, okay. okay so now, so we're going to do is we're going to tell the server to run this on the script. Now, this is what I do a lot of times. In my FileMaker solutions, I do this. I say, um, if, uh, and I want the function to pop out over here. I want to say, get active modifier keys. Okay, if it equals... What is that? Uh, can I can I bring that up? Active modifier keys. Let me see. I mean, if you see. if you're trying to find what modifier keys are, Oop. I got that needs that needs to get out of the way. Active modifier keys. How do I get the? Is this what this brings click, up the help right here? If you right click here? the link, it'll bring up the help. No, go back to the go back to cat. Well, it. okay, never mind. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. So I'm gonna hold the shift key. It'll be number one. But I would normally program all these in here. I'm just going to do shift key one. Okay. So if it equals number one, what it's going to do is it's going to perform the script locally so I can test it. So we're going to test it on pro to make sure before we turn it loose on the server, what's going to happen, right? So I'm going to go here. I'm going to tell it to perform the next meeting. I'm going to say, edit this, but the parameter is going to be ID, ID underscore contact. Okay, great. So, okay. So if the modifier key is down, it's gonna it's gonna do that. Else, which means it's not the shift key is not being held down. It's gonna run it against the server. So you can test it by holding down a shift key. I do this a lot in the starting point, things like that. So I hold the modifier key down. So then it's gonna either one of these is gonna pass the message back to me because we're calling it right. So on the so if I say beep show custom dialog, remember we said server finished. Six server finished probably successfully. Well, now we know definitively, definitively it finished. Okay, so we're gonna say um, if uh, if the okay if I'm mean, after what was it success if uh, if the uh, get script result. Remember this is the backward script parameter that's coming back. If that equals was it. Success. Did it have exclamation points in it, Margaret? Do we remember? Do anyone remember? I that? don't remember what Damn you. Damn it! <laughs> Sorry. Damn it! Uh, success. I think it was Margaret. just um, okay. Let me try like that. Yeah. And what we're gonna do is, then we're going to say, "quote uh, the um, the uh, script was su successfully." executed whatever blah 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 okay you could do whatever you want okay and then uh but then we could pass else else if it failed um you could actually pass back the actual message or you could just pass back the message in the thing in the in the in the dialogue at all right so you could do an if statement on it which is useful here else i'm going to say get script results so i'm, I'm there's a hundred ways of doing the same thing here i'm just trying to show everyone that there are options for how you solve this problem okay so, um, and then you could also specify a success. You could say, 
uh, failed, okay, or what you say, yeah, successful. You can even customize the button here, right? Pretty great. So I'm going to say that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run, I'm going to, this one down here, I'm going to run it, but I'm going to hold the shift key down. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do script, debugger's on, script debugger is there. Okay, I'm going to hold the shift key down, I'm going to hit, and I'm going to continue to hold the shift key. I'm going to one, two, three, I'm going to hit this one, bam. Okay, um, that's the button telling it's going to run this script. Okay, and it's going to say, is the active modifier key one enabled? I'm holding shift key, it should jump in here, one, two, three. Yep, it is. Now it's going to, on this server itself, not on the on on the local client itself, not on the server, it's going to run this. Go to layout. It's on the layout. Set error capture on. Okay. Find mode. Enter the number. Number one. Perform the find. Found it. Was there an error? No. Set it. Set it. And then here's the pass back. One, two, three. That's going to pass this back. This is the call, what they call the call stack. Okay. Call stack. And it's a stack of things that are executing. And so this was called, this is the button that called this. This is the script that called this. Okay. The call stack won't show you the server when it's going. It just disappeared. But, well, generally, yeah. I don't want to get into that. But, yeah, that's the idea. So if I step down, it's going to jump back to this one with the script result. One, two, three, click. Now we've jumped backwards uh, to where we called. Else it's never going to do that. Then here comes the custom dialog right here. Success. So that was the message. That was the success, right? So, oh no, it just to pass the uh, the script result equals success. It didn't, so it ran. Yeah, so I that code is bonkered up there, right? So let me fix this because it's success with an exclamation point. Okay, there we go. I like that. Save close. So what I'm gonna do this time? I'm not gonna run it with a script debugger. I'm just gonna run it at full speed to see what happens. I'm going to clear this, clear it. I'm going to hold down the shift key. One, two, three. There we go. Now it makes sense. Now I'm not going to hold the shift key down, and we're going to have the server do it. Okay? And on the server, I just want to make sure that when we call it, we're firing and waiting, right? Are we firing and waiting? Fire. Yeah, fire and wait for completion. So we're going to continue to, to monitor the results. Okay? Because here's the rub. If you do... Um, if you try to pass a script result back, you'll never get it back. If you're if you've already fired and forgot, Does that makes sense. You're never going to get it back. Okay? Oh, okay. Did not know that. So if you're sending a script result back, if you don't have it set to wait for completion, then if you're... it's not waiting and, and waiting and listing, right? Waiting and listing, right? You're not going to get it back. Okay, you've you've moved on. Hell, Nick had a we had a customer who took who, who every hour. You know, every day they run one PSAW script. This PSAW script took five hours to run or something. They didn't want to be waiting for it, so they would fire it. They'd have to be sitting there waiting for the result, the script result, five hours later, right? Who wants to do that? So I'm going to, uh, it's all good. I'm going to save it, come over here. I'm going to run it without the shift key. One, it's going to tell the server to do it. One, two, three. Okay. Now, next important to hot topic here. And this is something you and I went through the other day, Margaret. When you tell Fred, so say this is we're, we're Richard, I'm going to tell Margaret or someone to run this script. Hey, Margaret, I want you to open this file and run this script. Or I just tell you to run the script. Okay, Margaret, I want you to run the script in this file. What are you to do that? What are you going to do on your copy of Pro? What are you going to do? You're going to sit down at your computer, put your hand left hand on the mouse or left hand on the keyboard, right hand on the and mouse, probably. If you I would go like. Yeah, I'd go you know, open file. So I'd open the workflow record locked demo. Hey, what on happens when computer. you open, what happens when well, if I open the file then the startup script runs? And so any if other you tell opening server, scripts you have. Right. And when it closes, what is it gonna do? Uh closing script or anything else that you have that needs to run before the file is allowed to close. Correct. So when you tell PSOS to run, it's going to run the startup script every time. It's going to run the closing script every time. It does that before it ever gets to your script. It has to run the whole startup routine. Well, that's so, really dumb. Well, what happens if you have any script triggers that exist on the layout that you're navigating to? Will it set all of those off trying to get to the script that you're going to run? Oh, sure. Sure. That's why we went to the security bypass. Does that have any triggers on it? Oh, absolutely. It's going to run the startup script. And then, and then whatever a script would do, like, remember, 
If you write a script and you step on a layout and start doing stuff and there's landmines on there, you're saying, what if I, if I, if, if I, if I pretend there's no landmines there and I blindfold myself and I run out in the field in the Ukraine where the Russians have been, am I going to set off landmines? Of course you are. Whoa, no, I don't like that. How about if I set a robot to drive out there? I'm not there. Robot goes out there. Nope, it's going to blow up the landmines too. Okay, there's no universal. I wonder if they're ever going to, I think, is that a FileMaker 21 thing where they're maybe thinking about turning that off or a switch for that? Anyway, <laughs> I've been asking for it for like 15 years. But I think that's a... I think it's a feature in the next version of Founder. We can shut off the auto blow the shit out of everyone up function, right? All the landmines can be disabled. Like a universal wireless Bluetooth connection to the landmines, and they're going to listen. <laughs> and you trust, you hope that they're disabled so when you drive over them, they don't blow you up. If you think about it, if, if you're a military person, that's great. You can drive on it with your, your tanks. That no one else can. That's perfect. So uh, PSOS life. sets off everything. So feeling that I'm still having an issue. Grasping. It's not PSOS. I, You're telling the FileMaker server to run To open its own pro FileMaker Pro and do its own stuff in FileMaker Pro, like a little robot At going the, around clicking. Okay, so let's talk, a, let's talk about that real quick. That's a really important point. So here is your file. No, this is your FileMaker server that's now logged itself out. I'm going to log back in. This is a FileMaker server. These files are running here. Okay, I'm in here. However, however, I cannot see what's actually happening. When you're in FileMaker doing stuff, run a script, you kind of see it. It might the screen might flash, it might jump around, it might do this, or that screen would do flashy, flashy, and you'll see screens flashy around, flashy around, right? Whatever. And and so so the rub is is that you don't see that on FileMaker server. Well, on the FileMaker server is also part of the installation is a headless invisible version of FileMaker Pro. That's the, I think that's the best way to think of it. Someone at Claris would say, well, technically that's not correct because the Draco XYZ Shimbagwe fuse block blowhead will not operate properly if it's, you know, from all of our perspectives as FileMaker developers, it's a copy of FileMaker Pro with all the, the best bits and pieces and all the things you hate. So without is FileMaker a, Pro in an invisibility cloak? With an invisibility cloak. Which that so there's no windows for it to run. It's virtual. Does that make sense? So it's there. You just can't see it. And if you're on the FileMaker server, like I was actually on the FileMaker server, logged into it, you'd see this window here. You wouldn't see anything else. You wouldn't see anything else. Actually, let me. Uh, do I have the? Let me see my. That's another show I have to do some time about that. The uh, zero tier. All right, let me do this. Let me show this to you. This is really educational. So I'm going to go onto a FileMaker server that I personally have control into and onto. The different FileMaker server, one that runs my personal stuff. So now we're actually on the actual FileMaker server. And so remember, Mar remember Margaret on Windows, you would go into Task Manager and you kill like Steam when you're playing a game because it was misbehaving or something, right? Remember yeah. that? This right here, the Activity Monitor is the Task Manager. Okay. And if I go in here and I go by process name and I sort by process name, it should be alphabetical. So this is what I want to show you. Jacob Taylor knows about this. I was, I asked Jacob this the other day. Is it when, when you have FileMaker, well, that's F, but normally when you have there, F -F, okay, here, there there you is. go. There you go. So here's trouble right here. So this is this right here. That right there is the core engine that manages the record locking and all the sharing and all the stuff. That is the program in quotes. That's it right there running invisibly. So when we log in with a browser and, and I can zoom back in here. Sorry about that. Let me zoom in here. That is it running right there. When I log into the browser interface over here, the browser interface is being driven, but you're seeing the, 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 the results of this. The browser interface, I think, is running on a on an admin or a different name one over here. But there's one of these over here that comes up that, if I click up one notch, there we go. Oh, I went way down. I saw that go way down. Oh, no. Okay, Sassy D is uh, where PSOS is, and, and uh, Sassy, is a, is Sassy is, a, is a scheduled version of PSOS. They both run on this process right here. So that right there is FileMaker Pro without a head. That one right there. Okay. Huh. So there's no way you could bring it up and see it even if you wanted to, right? No, 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 no. 
So the idea is that it's headless. So what you have to do is you have to open a copy. I'm going to go ahead and close this for the moment. So we don't need that. So what we want to do is the whole problem is that it's a copy of Pro. We, we know it's a copy of Pro. We treat it like a copy of Pro, which means it's going to run the startup scripts. It's going to trip over every script trigger that you would trip on as a Pro user. It's going to trip over startup and close scripts. It's going to do all that. So what you want to do is kind of set your startup scripts to be looking for that to, to chop them off. So if I open, I need a copy of starting point. Yes, which you should. Can you give me a link to that, Margaret, real quick? And Is there not one on the server? I'll, I'll grab. You can put that in there for me. So in the startup script, we code it. Oh, actually, it's in BVA. Stop. I can do it from here. It's in BVA because B Big Valley Aviation is starting point. We use starting point with them, right? Yes. I eat our own dog food, right? Oh, yes. oh, Every time I say that, we need to uh, play a sound where we have dogs barking and stuff. Um, so if I go to the Big Valley real quick, we go to the startup script. I go to recent, Big Valley Aviation. Give me two seconds, and it's in here because, you know, you're like, hey, it looks like something we've seen before, right? There it is. So you go to startup script. So it's in general. As uh, in general, there to start up right here. So every time that you call PSOS, it's going to, the, the PSOS that you have on the server is going to run this stuff. So you don't want it to run too much stuff. Now keep in mind, it's not drawing a window. So if you have Windows stuff, it's largely going to ignore it or it'll it'll create it virtually in its, in its mind, but it won't be displaying it on the server. Say, so have a new window. That command will work. It'll be invisible and, and, and virtual like it is on, um, WebDirect as a client like WebDirect works very much like that. So allow user board on. Yep. Yep. Perform a, a slight pause on that. I think the server will allow for that. Okay. Then right here, it does a detection. Hey, is, is the application that's running this script have something with the name server in it? If so, get out of here. <laughs> so whenever PSOS runs, it's going to run this much code every last stink in time. And there's a 0 0.01 right there. So that we had a little bit of a delay right there. Okay. Makes sense. And we do the same thing. Should do the same thing on the close script, I would hope. Yep, right there. So that's so even though it's doing a startup and close script, we have the ability to control that. So it just doesn't run all this other stuff, especially on the startup script. It runs a lot of stuff down here. Check this, do this. So set the calendar, do this, do that. Set some other stuff, do this, do that. So much for time savings. <laughs> Can server do anything that pro can do? Ah, how what, what, how would you like to know what uh, I what is that? I can do everything you can do better. What's that song? <laughs> I, I, I I know the song. It, it, that's a Disney song, I think, but I don't. Is know. Is that what that is? Okay, so so this is like the FileMaker server can do anything you can do better. That's a lie. So no. in here, if you go, <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a lie. Disney <laughs> Disney lies to you. It's it's a lie. Okay. All right, so over here, these are all the scripts that we have. Over here are all the scripts we could call. Okay, I'm going to turn a bunch of these on or whatever. And you say, show me all the commands. Show me only the commands that work on file, on Mac. You're going to scroll down here. Uh, MBS. Oh, there's one. DD, uh, DDEs are Windows code things. And AV, AV players are go things. And that's a go thing. And that's a go thing. Ah, show me only things that work on iOS. Okay, or don't work, or don't, if it's great, it doesn't work on iOS. So iOS doesn't do the execute SQL script step. Perform Apple script, which is a technology that Apple loves, but also would like to see go away. I, iPhones and iPads can't run Windows stuff. There's that. Okay. Ooh, save a copy. Oh, add on package. Okay, great. So then you go, show me the stuff on server. So this is PSOS and Sassy. So what can it not do? Oh, configure huh. local notifications. Install on timer, because that's where it's running a timer on a window that's sitting there hanging out. But really, the whole part idea with PSOS, it just doesn't pop a window and hang out, smoking a cigarette, you know, on lunch break or something, right? <laughs> okay. PSOS can't call itself. I'm going to call myself. They turned this on one time early on in ETS in the last, I don't know, year or two. And, 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 it, and engineering thought it'd be kind of cool. And then promptly, was it Todd Geist or... I don't know, one of the top consultancy developer persons pr promptly lit on fire and melted the server to the ground in a smoking hole, right? <laughs> and they're like, well, how about we turn off the smoking hole function? So they did that. Error logging. Pre there's no preview mode. That's how it'll, how it'll look when you output it, right? Nope. 
Close the pop popover is a visual function, right? So I guess you can open a popover, but you but the popover closing and opening is really a visual thing for the user. It's not, it doesn't affect what your set field command is. That's not close card. Card's a window. That's a big deal. Close popover is this little visual thing, right, Margaret, over here. So from a script perspective, if I do this and pop a popover, that the script a script that runs in this context and a script that runs in this context will behave identically. That makes no difference. If it's in the way, it'll look look it looks through it with X-ray vision like Superman sees through concrete walls and all that kind of stuff. X-ray vision sees through that. Um, so we'll go back to our script workspace. What other things don't do? Form find. Okay, this is not a file maker find. That is that mislabeled thing that I would love to slap someone about. Okay, that is a text replace function. Like okay. if you're in a text editor, find every incidence of Margaret and change it to Fred. And Odd it, that it, it can't says, do a text replace. Is that because I don't know why? I don't particularly care. I've never used this. No, that's a lot. I've used it twice in the last 15 years. That's about 10, 15 years old. Okay, format allow formatting bar. Formatting bar is the thing across the top. AV player is iOS stuff. Don't we don't want the server beeping. The server, <laughs> hey Richard, what's going on? We got a server in the corner. It's what the hell? Dial a phone. One eight hundred. The one nine hundred uh, phone number that's like eight dollars a minute. Your file maker server is calling it. Perfect. Enable touch keyboard. Flush the cache. Because it because. Um, <laughs> It's already on the server, so the cache is it's already there. It doesn't buy you anything, right? Yes. Oh, no? it doesn't refresh objects? That seems kind of refresh object is a visual thing. Here's the I deal with a refresh. Not, I thought that was to get auto enter calculations to fire again. I don't know that technique. If that's a Nick technique, then yeah, you can't or I'm fundamentally misunderstood. Well, like it could something. be. It sounds like something Nick would invent, an auto enter. But the uh, the bottom line, uh, what was that? Is this one right here? But uh, which one was it? It was the uh, which one are you having a problem with, Margaret? The uh, uh, oh, refresh, refresh object. object. Large no refreshing object is where okay you have something on the screen like some sort of calculation, like it yeah. should be like something like that, but it's not accurate. Yes. And your and your script finishes, it's not accurate. So you run a command to refresh it. In let's be clear about something. If the number, if your script ran correctly, and this is really supposed to be 555, and it's showing you this, in the brains of FileMaker, in the memory of FileMaker, in the FMP12 file, the 555 is in there, it's correct. There's a difference between what is real in the FileMaker file and the crap it is sprayed on the screen. Oh. That, there's, a, there's, a di there's a disconnect between what's real and what's displayed on the screen. That's another hugely important concept. I know we're way past time here. These are a lot of big concepts. It's like when people say, I'm going to teach you how to do a FileMaker learning course. You're going to learn it in three hours. <laughs> you can hardly barely crack the door open in three hours. So and this has to do with programming in general. You have a back end. You remember like the memory leak idea with Chris yes. and the memory leak? So in the back end, there's all this stuff going on. This interface is supposed to largely reflect automatically what's in the back end of the memory. Sometimes it's out of sync for whatever reason. The refresh forces the whole window or a portal or an object to refresh. So the window goes, well, the user thinks this is screwed up. So I'm going to go back to the inside memory and figure out what it's supposed to be. And it goes, oh, yeah. It refreshes it and it says it's actually this. Okay. So refreshing an object isn't telling the calculation to go again. It's telling no. the window to go check the information and the calculation. To make sure, to make sure. It's, it, it matches what's in the back in, in the bowels of the system. That's that's the, the true source of information, the Draco engine back in the I hood. did not realize that. Okay. Yeah. This is that the interface is a reflection of what's going on in the little RAM microchips of your computer. Okay. But it's not really the raw data. If you want to see the raw, raw data, you'd have to be in a compiler or some Xcode, whatever, and then tap the memory location. We're talking serious deep. That's why FileMaker is so great because it automatically refreshes, for the most part, to reflect what's in the back-end system. It's a front-end graphical interface that reflects upon the back-end data system. That's part of what FileMaker builds is that, what is FileMaker Pro? 
It's a back-end, start with a back-end database. It's like three things all bolted together. Back-end database, it's a graphical front-end, and it's a scripting business logic capability. And a lot of other systems, those are three products. Oh, I got a back-end database. It's Oracle. I got a front-end. It's this other company, and I got the scripting that we do in JavaScript or Python or something. That's something else. And they combine them. Finally, you buy one package. It's all three in one place. So, but the the graphical display is separate than the back end data system. If they're out of sync, that refresh object says, uh, resync. <laughs> Most 99.5% of the time, it's not necessary. It's only necessary when we do shenanigans as developers and the sync can't keep up with what we're doing. And if you close FileMaker and reopen it, it would refresh because that would cause it to refresh anyway. So eventually, it's eventually consistent, eventually accurate. But sometimes people want to finish the script and have it be accurate at that very moment. That's where the scripts come in. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Media Sandbox. I, hmm, I don't know if you're still here, Media Sandbox. The question is considerations to get date and times from host? Question mark. If I come over here and we go to help, we go FileMaker Pro help, and we say, <sighs> we say it's one with the get functions, right? When we got get, I say oh. functions. But is there a get host application time or something? Yeah, you saw this, Margaret, the other day. It's uh, but I want to don't want to go get functions, and it's called get host. Is it host or is it? I think it's host. There's a host in it somewhere. Host. There's a host name, host app. Uh, address. Current oh, current. <laughs> yeah, of course. Get curse code timestamp or get current. So you put the host in here. This comes back as a timestamp from the host. Now, keep in mind on Mac and Windows, this will be the, the local time of those machines. On Linux, if you have a Linux FileMaker server, it will always come back as GMT or UTC or Zulu. Depends on how you want to refer to the same thing. It's a uh, all three of those, Zulu time, GMT, UTC, those are all the same thing. Three different names. Good question. In fact, we do that. In fact, we did that over here in BVA because I was running into some issues and I was, and it kept saying, it, sh it kept showing my customers at work at like five in the morning. I mean, they're early birds here, but they're not that early. Or it was two in the morning or something. So I went over here in our log system. That's so what I did in logs is on the right side of the logs, I have, uh, if you scroll, oh, come on, give me a break. Go up there, get out of the way. We have this server server name, server version, server date, server time. So this is the time when this is run, and the local time is going to be 2.09 p.m. The server time is 10.09 p.m., right? That allows me to see the server stuff here, and I just yeah. use those get functions, right? Cool. There you go. I think we're probably good then. Thank you. No everyone. other questions. Did Jess get anything value out of this? Uh, I mean, get... I'm hoping. Yeah, Mikey says thanks, RCC. Fun session. Uh, Mikey, Mike. I hope that Mikey, Mike. Also, they never use server. Jesse said yes. They got good information out of it. Uh, Ken, you are good on that application version. Actually, we'll just open it again. Do you want to open up the little? chunk of the startup script that tells the server to go somewhere else tells the server to i mean this one right here yes so pattern count is if we're searching for that bit of text the word server in there right so if, yes. if so if i go to the app right now if i go to the git function well, and if I you go, click the link right there it's a it's a link the underline means that it's a link if you open up the actual calculation Oh, there it is. Yep. Is that an MBS thing or is that a Claire? That thing? is an MBS thing. That is okay. Christian Schmitz. The thing is, Christian. Oh, well, no. Okay. I don't need that. What I want to do is see the data viewer. Sorry. My bad. I want to see the real data on this. So if I go to watch and I say <laughs> get, if I go to get, ah, get, it's like a cat, pussy cat on the keyboard. It's like, no. Application version. We have pro, see, pro. But if I was on server, it would say server or something. So all we're doing is looking for the word in there, right? Mm -hmm. And if I say get host, host, we have current oh, host that type. that should tell you that it's server, so that, right? Yeah, but, but the get application version tells you what is running the script right now. 
this tells you that we are using a server and the server is 20.3.2. Got it. There's a difference. There's a difference, right? What is running the script right now? If you want the, what is running the script, this very second, if it's running a script, is the current application version. It's not so much the version, it's just the name is in there too. Damn it. Application version. Yeah, see, I'm on Pro. When you run the script on server and it has this, it's going to say something about server. If you have it on WebDirect, it'll probably say something about server and or WebDirect. You'd have to check on those results. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Right. Today has been a session. Uh, we will see you all on Monday. Bye.